What's up, history peeps? Today we're going to go over Abraham Lincoln, number 16 president that is going to have the momentous issue of civil war on his hands. All right, so let's get started right away. The election of 1860, that's the first thing that Lincoln's going to have to deal with. Uh, he wins, obviously. I mean, he becomes president. But he wins in a country where half of it didn't vote for him. And so he doesn't get a single vote in the South, and so the South is going to secede. They say, clearly, our vote doesn't even matter. You Northerners, with your industry and your arrogance, you're, it's going to be your way anyway. So we're going to secede, and we're going to start our own country called the Con Confederate States of America, right, led by Jefferson Davis. Right. Um, there's going to be on Lincoln's... There's going to be this, after Lincoln's elected, there's going, to, there's going to be one last compromise that they're going to try to pass. It ultimately doesn't pass. It's called the Crittenden Compromise. And basically, it gets rid of the Missouri, of the uh, Compromise of 1850. Uh, basically, all the five things that you needed to know before are going to be, they're going to try to get rid of them. All right, so the Fugitive Slave Act will kind of work around that. Slavery is allowed to expand indefinitely. Uh, but ultimately, it's not, going to, it's not going to be passed. And Abraham Lincoln is going to give his inauguration speech on a capital, kind of symbolically, that is not complete. It's still under construction. And so Lincoln's going to give the famous uh, speech which says, in your hands, my dissatisfied brethren, and not in mine lies the momentous issue of civil war. We must not be enemies. All Abraham Lincoln wants to do is to stop slavery from expanding and keep the union together. That is his primary goal, keep the union together. Eventually, it's going to turn into Abraham Lincoln, the great emancipator. Uh, but there is more to that story than just, oh, I'm going to free the slaves today. Right? The secession crisis. Basically, the Confederate States of America is born, 11 st states secede, and Abraham Lincoln doesn't want the border states to go. All right? He promises the border states, look, I'm not going to tax slavery where it is. I'm just not going to allow it to expand. All right? And so you have Missouri, Maryland, Delaware, West Virginia, Kentucky, all right, all of your border states, he's going to try to keep them happy. And remember that if the border states go the way of the Confederacy, the nation's capital of Washington, D.C. is going to be surrounded by the Confederate States of America. Maryland will, you know, if the Confederacy is right there, the war is going to be over, and the, eventually the North's going to have to lose it. All right, Abraham Lincoln does not want that. All right, Fort Sumter. Here's the background information. South Carolina secedes, pretty basic. Uh, but there's this, this fort, this Union fort, out there in the middle of Charleston Harbor. And South Carolina considers it theirs. Okay, we seceded from the Union, that island is ours. But the Union holds on to it. So Abraham Lincoln has a choice to make. One, he can attack, okay, he can attack uh, from Fort Sumter. He can attack South Carolina with the cannons there if he wants to, all right? Um, two, he can just ignore the issue and then have them surrender, but then he looks weak. So what is he going to do? Well, what he does is he says, I'm going to send aid. He sends uh, food, supplies, not weapons, to Fort Sumter because he says, look, if there's going to be war, the South's going to have to deliver the first blow. And so that's exactly what happens. Uh, Pierre Beauregard fires on uh, General Anderson in Fort Sumter, ironic because he trained him how to shoot a cannon way back in the day. Uh, and eventually, the, the North is going to lose the first battle of the Civil War, if you will. The, the shots ring out at 4 o'clock, and uh, you know eventually, uh, the Union flag is going to be lowered. There's going to be a surrender ceremony. Nobody dies, really. I mean, there's a horse that's killed, and during the, uh, during the ceremony, they give a 100-gun salute. Uh, and then, obviously, well, not obviously, but one of the individuals dies as a result, result of that. Uh, some, one of the uh, guns backfires on it, but nobody dies, all right? But that's not going to be the story of the Civil War. 600,000 Americans are going to die if you had the North and the South uh, deaths together, all right? So we move on to the Civil War basics, things that you should probably know. The first thing is it's Abraham Lincoln and Jefferson Davis is the president for the Confederacy. The goal is to preserve the Union, bring the Union back together, the United in the United States of America. The Anaconda Plan is created by General Winfield Scott, old fuss and feathers himself. Uh, he's been around for a while. He's old, he's aged, he's overweight. Uh, we're going to have a very difficult time because uh, our best general is a guy that's going to go the way of the South, Robert E. Lee. All right. Uh, the Ana and his plan is the Anaconda Plan. Basically, you're going to blockade the South 
you're going to take the Mississippi River, and you're going to take the capital of Richmond. This war is supposed to last 90 days. It lasts four years. Okay. So northern generals you should know. We have George B. McClellan. He's going to train the military really well, but he's always going to not use the military to the best of his ability. He's always afraid that the South is outnumbering him. Uh, eventually, Lincoln's going to say, if you would not like to use the military, I would like to borrow it for a time. Eventually, he's going to fire McClellan, rehire him, fire him again, and McClellan is going to run against him in the election of 1864. All right, we'll get to that in a second here. Uh, you also need to know, obviously, Ulysses S. Grant, uh, known as the Butcher. He will later become president. He's actually going to win the war. Um, and then there's other people like William Tecumseh Sherman, who's famous for Sherman's March to the Sea, which basically leads to the end of the Civil War. Okay, For the South, obviously, you have Robert E. Lee, a guy that doesn't even believe in secession, but his family is from Virginia. He is loyal to Virginia. His wife's from Virginia. And so if he stays with the Union, he looks like a traitor. And so he basically signs the resignation and joins the Confederacy, even though he himself doesn't agree with the cause, but he's loyal to his, to his nation. Um, you're also going to have Pierre Beauregard, um, Stonewall Jackson, to name a few uh, examples here. All right, let's look at Abraham Lincoln as president. A lot of people don't talk about this a lot. They always think of Lincoln the Monument. But Lincoln, in terms of civil liberties, that's, you know, when you think of um, someone like Andrew Jackson, hey, no one has a problem bad-mouthing bad Andrew Jackson about his ignoring uh, the Supreme Court, but Lincoln kind of does the same thing, right? So Lincoln's going to suspend habeas corpus, and habeas corpus is people telling you why they are arresting you, right? And Lincoln suspends that in Maryland to stop the nation from being surrounded. There's people critical of Lincoln, and Lincoln thinks that if this news keeps happening, then Maryland is going to go the way of the Confederacy, and the nation's gonna be surrounded. So he takes it as a war powers measure, and boom, suspends habeas corpus, even locks up uh, the grandson of uh, Francis Scott Key, uh, and he's going to be locked up for being critical of Lincoln. Um, basically, there's a Supreme Court case in 1861. Roger B. Taney in the Supreme Court says that this is unconstitutional. Lincoln can't do this, uh, but Lincoln ignores the ruling and continues to do it as a war power measure. Uh, prize cases being, if you look at the Anaconda Plan, Lincoln is blockading the South, and so, we capture a ship from England. Usually if we capture a ship, that's gonna to lead to war. England considers it piracy. We say, look, you're giving supplies to the Confederacy. We can't allow that. Uh, eventually, that is allowed by the Supreme Court because they say, look, that is a wartime power. There was a de facto war, meaning not an actual war because Lincoln can't declare war. If he declares war, then he's basically giving legitimate, legitimacy to the Confederacy and he can't do that, right? So there's never actually war declared. Um, in other news here, 7, 8, 9, and 10, it's all kind of, it's a busy, yeah, we have the Civil War, but there's also other things happening in terms of internal development. Legal Tender Act, Congress is running low on specie, uh, running low on actual gold and silver, so they start printing greenbacks, and it boosts the economy. And later on, about 30 years later, the government's going to do it again, or at least consider doing it again. Um, the Homestead Act. The U.S. is going to give you 160 acres if you move west. we got to settle the west. And so basically, after five years, you settle that land, it's yours. Basically, free of charge. That's the Homestead Act. Moral Land Grant Act, the federal government is going to give money for the building of secondary schools and universities. So as we move west, we also want the public to be educated. All right? And as we move west, uh, the federal government is going to give money and land to railroad companies to build a transcontinental railroad. All right, that is going to come into existence in 1869, but some of the development is going to happen during the Civil War. But the completion, when it's, if it shows up on an exam, and I guarantee it will, 1869, that's when you're going to get the transcontinental railroad. But we've got all kinds of busy things, boosting the economy, keeping things going. The Confederacy doesn't have that luxury. People moving west, okay, Moral Land Grant Act, building universities, all right, and also moving west with the choo -choo 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 -choo, choo -choo, the railroad. All right. Next up, the Emancipation Proclamation. Probably the thing that Lincoln's most famous for, but here's more. there is more to that story. It starts with John C. Fremont, who's a famous explorer. Uh, starts the Bear Flag Republic in California, also a military hero. Uh, and basically, he's in charge of Missouri. 
and he frees the slaves of Missouri. But Missouri, if you remember, is a border state. And Abraham Lincoln says, no, you cannot do that because if you start freeing slaves, then that's gonna tick off the border states and they might join the Confederacy. So basically he has to tell John C. Fremont, you were wrong, okay? Removes him from his position and also is going to say, those slaves are not free, all right? Kind of an interesting thing about Lincoln, all right? But war is going very bad, okay? The casualties are building up, building up, building up, building up. And eventually, uh, Abraham Lincoln is going to have to issue the Emancipation Proclamation because people are not wanting to sign up for the war anymore. And so what he's going to do is he's going to say, look, we got to turn this into a moral crusade. All right? And so he issues the Emancipation Proclamation. But what the history books oftentimes don't tell you is that Abraham Lincoln comes up with the idea of the Emancipation Proclamation at roughly around September. But it's not going to take effect until January. So he basically tells us, if you stop fighting now, I will let you keep your slaves until 1900. Come back to the Union. Come back. Obviously, the South rejects that notion, and the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, goes into effect, and obviously now the war is turning into a moral crusade. The South is outraged, but uh, slaves in the South and in the South only at this time are going to be freed. So Emancipation Proclamation, in the summary, free slaves only in the South. The 13th Amendment will free slaves nationwide. All right. Next up, Gettysburg. Lee is going to, and by Lee I mean Robert E. Lee, is going to try to invade the North, something that he generally doesn't do. The whole goal of the South is just to let the North invade the South and wear themselves out. Fight the North when they come into our turf and then wear them out, just like George Washington beat the British. All right, it's the same strategy, uh, but this time he's going to invade Pennsylvania uh, unfortunately for Lee, this is a very bad maneuver, and it is a bloodletting. From July 1st to July 3rd, 1863, we're going to have 51,000 casualties in three days. Um, and so Abraham Lincoln is going to give this, this famous speech, four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought forth in this continent a, a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. And he says that this nation will have a new birth of freedom after the war is over. When all is said and done and over with, that this nation will start living up to its ideals and we will have a new birth of freedom. At the time, I mean, it only takes three minutes to read this speech. It wasn't widely received. It wasn't well-liked. Newspaper people were criticizing him because Abraham Lincoln gave this speech after another guy spoke, I believe, for two and a half hours. Um, but eventually, people start, you know, after the war, and uh, people do look back on that speech with, with I don't know, sentiment. All right, moving over here, Native Americans, uh, oftentimes left out of the history books as well. Basically, the Great Sioux Uprising. Many people are moving west, and that's in violation of the Fort Laramie Treaty. And so, basically, Chief Little Crow is going to attack. About a thousand U.S. settlers are going to be killed um, before the uprising is put down. The other thing is very tragic. It's called the Sand Creek Massacre. More people are moving west, uh, Black Kettle and White Antelope. They're going to give up much of the creek land. And keep in mind, most of the people living here are old, they're elderly, they're women and children. Um, they even, Black Kettle and White Antelope, even meet with Abraham Lincoln. Um, Black Kettle is going to get this big American flag. Uh, White Antelope is going to get a peace medal. Eventually, uh, Colorado doesn't want them there, the governor doesn't, and Colonel John Shivington don't. And so they attack, and eventually it's going to turn into a bloodletting. It's, uh, it's a cold temperatures, and the U.S. Army basically just shows up and starts killing people. I wish that I could say that there was more to that story in terms of Native Americans attacking and causing havoc, but really the army just shows up and starts massacring uh, innocent people with a huge American flag above when the Native Americans thought that they were going to be safe. So kind of a tragic uh, part of our nation's history, to say the least. Uh, for number four, New York draft riots. Um, remember that once the Emancipation Proclamation turns into effect, really what happens are draft riots. Northerners, particularly Irish people who are at the bottom of the social uh, strata, say, look, if the Emancipation Proclamation frees blacks, when the war's over, that means that they'll probably take my job. And so you have whites, especially Irish, attacking blacks in New York City. 
All right, because if you were a, a northerner who was wealthy, you could get out of the draft by paying $300. Obviously, if you're Irish, you have no money in New York, that's not what you're going to do. So kind of another uh, tragic uh, part of our nation's history, draft riots. All right, almost done here with the election of 1864. You've got an interesting situation. Who are you going to have running against each other? Well, it's Abraham Lincoln, who could have canceled this election and doesn't. Uh, proving that he does want to keep the republic alive and democracy alive. Uh, and who is he going to choose as his running mate? Lincoln's a Republican. He actually chooses a Democrat. His name, Andrew Johnson. And he is the only person from the South not to leave with the Confederacy. So he's the only Southerner to stay in his position uh, from Tennessee. And Abraham Lincoln chooses, his, chooses him as his running mate. Who are they running against? John B. McClellan, the very general that Lincoln fired. And John B. McClellan is in charge of the Democrats, and basically they were nicknamed Copperheads or Peace Democrats, and they call for an immediate end to the war. The guy that was fighting for the war is now saying, look, if the war ends today, um, we'll let the South go, and that will just be the end of the story. All right, so not just Abraham Lincoln as the, as the myth, as the legend is at stake here with this election, but also the future of the United States of America, because if John B. McClellan wins, that's it. The South is going to, you know, have their own terms, and that's just going to be the way of it. Um, unfortunately, fortunately for Abraham Lincoln, William Tecumseh Sherman starts his march to the sea, a scorched earth approach where he's destroying everything in his path. If you've seen the movie Gone with the Wind, you see everything's erupting in fire. Uh, and Abraham Lincoln's going to win, and he's going to give his famous, with malice towards none, with charity for all, uh, what is strive on to finish the work we are in to bind up the nation's wounds. Uh, unfortunately for Abraham Lincoln, uh, within two months, he will be assassinated. Within a month, the war will be over. And within two months of this speech, he will be assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, a dissatisfied northerner who sympathized with the South and things actor. All right, so Reconstruction. This is where it's going to get uh, pretty crazy because Abraham Lincoln is a Republican, and when he's assassinated, Andrew Johnson's going to take over. So what's Abraham Lincoln's plan? Well, he never wrote it out, but the best we can gather is what's known as the 10% plan plus the 13th Amendment. The 10% plan meant that if 10% of a South's population, so let's say that Mississippi said that they were sorry, if 10% of the people in Mississippi, eligible voters, said that they were sorry for secession and just said that they are sorry about the whole situation, then the entire population and the entire state is back in the Union. That's the end of it, except if you're a leading general, then you have to be pardoned by the president. And then the 13th Amendment, said that um, all blacks are now free, that slavery is forever gone. Um, unfortunately, Lincoln is going to be assassinated, and he's going to be the best hope for the South, all right? Because the radical Republicans are in charge of Congress. All right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War and the big tragedy that is his assassination. Good luck on the exam. Lots of content here. Please study those notes. And if you need anything, I'm here for you. Uh, and the force will always be with you as well. Have a good day.